two of SumoCast. You are listening to Laura Young and Rebecca Sweetmore. Hello. Today we're going to be talking about adapting to change and most notably looking after our health and well-being while we're working from home. We're joined by Sumo Group HR Manager Joe Hinckley. Hi. And our Learning and Development Manager Jenny Mulhoy. Hello. Before we dive in, to give any new listeners a bit of context, these podcasts have come about after all of our Sumo Digital Studios began working from home. And it's actually been really fascinating to see how we've adapted our processes and how we do things, how we communicate and how, despite everything, we're continuing to work on some incredible and very top secret projects. So we wanted to share some of that. Maybe you'll find it interesting. Maybe you'll find it useful. So back to the topic at hand. Jenny and Joe, thank you for joining us. How are you both finding working from home so far? So I have to say, from my experience, I am absolutely loving working this way um, in ways that I didn't expect. I think having um, kind of working remotely means that I'm actually reaching out to people in a different way. I'm able to see my family a lot more than I ever have done. And it's given me a new energy in my work. I think that mix between kind of play and work just really suits me and suits my style and it means that actually I've been even more productive and more energetic in my work and I'm really grateful for that a that you know I've always kind of really liked my job but now it feels more of a lifestyle rather than going to a job because of all the different elements it's just made it um, a lot more invigorating and I'm really lucky like I say that I feel that way I know that there are others that um, haven't had that same experience and obviously we're we're helping those people Um, and I know that there are others that have also been in this boat as well so it's it's been um, an interesting transition and it's come up with lots of different things that I've liked in a lot of ways that I didn't expect. Why do you think that is like is it is it maybe that you've kind of got more time in the day um, you, you don't have to worry about a commute or is it just being in a, in a familiar environment? I think it's I think it's a couple of things. I think it's first of all going to work and then coming back from work it feels like work is a very separate entity of my life. I, yeah, you know, I yeah. leave my house, I go to work, I do that thing, I then come back and then I have home Jenny whereas this it merges the two so and I think it's because it's kind of been forced that it's not just working remotely it's also working remotely with your family in the same place with your children with your husband with all the people that you live with you've kind of had to I've had to let go of barriers that maybe I put there before I think before I probably left home Jenny at the door came in and was professional Jenny whereas now I've had conference calls where I'm you know rocking my 18 month old to sleep and stuff like that and people are seeing kind of the mess that's in my background you know it's like this is me and this is who I really am and that's been really quite liberating that's awesome. Joe. how have you found it? Has it been okay for you so far? Um, I think, like Jenny says, it's different for everybody. Um, I think I took a little while to adapt. I'm very much used to going into the office, being around people. Um, and I think I very much have that, you know, home me and professional me. Um, and I've always worked in that way. Um and I think it took me a few days to kind of adjust. Um, originally, I was working downstairs on the dining room table. My other half's at home, so he'd already set up in the um, spare room in the what we've got as a computer room, so he was already there. And we've then also got my 10-year-old at home off school. So originally, I thought, I'll work downstairs in the dining room. Um, I'll be kind of on hand for my son. And I worked like that for a couple of weeks and it really wasn't working for me because I felt in our our dining room is our living space as well. And I very much found that I wasn't able to switch off. My computer was always there. I'd literally just move um, to the next chair to eat my lunch. Then I could see emails popping up and I just wasn't able to get away from it. So I thought I've got to do something different. And I was like, 
do I cover it up with it? My friend suggested covering it up with a sheet so I could just not see it. And I was like, but I can still see it under the sheet. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, we over the weekend, we had a good think about what we could do that would be different. And we did some jiggling around in um, one of the bedrooms. And now I have a desk in the bedroom that I can actually, I've set up on and I can actually close the door at the end of the day. And it That's has made good. it so much yeah. better um it's That's given awesome. me yeah a lot more sort of energy this week that I've got a separate space and the living space is still our living area but I know everybody yeah. you know I know everybody's different and I know everybody isn't sort of that fortunate to be able to have that space so I think the main thing is if there's something that's not working and you know it's trying to be creative and thinking about well what can I do that's different yeah yeah it's a kind of the mental separation I think is is one of the most important things just being able to either shut your laptop and tuck it away somewhere or actually leaving the room and closing the door I think makes a, a world of difference so how have you found staying in touch with your team and having kind of social check-ins has that been has that been any different to normal, really? Or have you had to kind of pay extra attention to it? I think we've had to probably pay extra attention to it in terms of making time, because I think it's quite easy to just get run away with the work that you need to do. So whereas kind of in studio, you might just have a conversa- a conversation just starts and then organically that happens. Whereas we've put in place kind of a... Um, like a virtual chat for everybody once a week and then there's some ad hoc things that happen we message each other quite a lot more on teams and uh, things like I have a I have a walk around so I have um, someone in the team that I will call and I'll (laughs) take my time where I'm allowed to go out for exercise and I have that time that we chat um, on the phone and I really cherish that and that's been really great for um, for me to be able to keep that keep in touch but it it has kind of become I guess a bit more structured rather than um the organic chat that happens in studio yes I'd agree it's um has to become more or it's become more structured you've got a plan actually I'd quite like to have a coffee with a virtual coffee with this person so you know you kind of have to plan that a little bit more around you know what people's individual home circumstances are because you know it might be that if somebody is looking after their children that that's not suitable at that time for them so you just again have to think outside the box a little bit and just think a little bit more about how things can work yeah yeah for sure I think that's one of the things that I'm really missing out on is sort of the like within our our team we've got some quite good banter between us throughout the day and so if you're not you know if you're in a bit of a slump or your motivation's dropping a little bit it's always good to have the have the team around to bounce ideas off and things um so that's definitely one aspect that I'm missing I think we're doing okay in the sense that we, we we schedule a call every morning to check in with each other and in some ways that's that's kind of become more productive for us because we know what we're all going to be doing that day we know where we need help that day so that's been quite good as well it feels quite natural as well like when we're having these like cups of teas in the morning and we're running through the work that we're going to do we'll just completely diverge and go off on a different topic and start talking about something we did in the evening and it's really nice because sometimes we you know sometimes we are focused on work and we're in like right work mode off we go but other times it's like okay this is just like being in the office it's it's quite nice it's <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely a different way of communicating so you both have been really helpful in providing resources to everyone at Sumo while they adjust to working from home um what have you been kind of especially cognizant of and conscious of when communicating with everyone have you been trying to ensure that they're getting the socialization they need or that their setup is correct have you how have you been approaching this I think we've tried to um, look at practical things each week so the first week was very much about um, tips for remote working because for a lot of people it was a new thing um, you know so it was about practically what are the tips to help people um, when they are working remotely and then sort of 
The second week was about, you know, okay, we've all worked at home now for a week. What's the reality of that? What's that looking like? What are the challenges? What can we do to make things better for everybody? Um, You know, what supports out there that people can perhaps look at themselves um, in different areas that they're struggling with? Um, And then it's kind of changes week on week, depending what comes out and what challenges we hear across the studios that people are sort of facing and we adapt accordingly each week really. Yeah I think we are really lucky that we um, had put in some training before any of this even happened you know we had no idea obviously that this was going to be happening and um, so at the back end of last year and going into this year we um, ran some mental health first aid training So we have mental health first aiders all across the business. And that has been just fantastic during this time because you've got people in studios that people can reach out to equally. um, Some of those mental health first aiders also reach out to others just to check in. How are you doing? Have sort of wellness meets or just even message them on Teams. How are you doing this week? Um, So that's been a great support mechanism. But also we're able to ask them you know, ear to the ground, what are you hearing? And that then helps us um, to get a broader perspective of what's happening across all the studios, not just in the UK, but also in India and Canada as well. So that has been um, really useful. Joe also arranged our provider of the mental health first aid training, also did a webinar for all managers. And this was helping them to think about managing through a crisis with some tips for how to do it for themselves and also some tips for leading their team as well so I think people went away again with just some um, ideas to put in place I mean this is all new to everybody it's not like there's a a a set program for managing through coronavirus there's no there's no manual for this I mean what we do know is people will go through a change curve and we want to help people when they're going through that kind of um, slump to help pull them out and it's using all the resources that we currently have so it's using our EAP program it's helping them with um, mental health first aiders it's helping the managers to think how they can also be there for themselves it's making sure that they also take care of themselves and then also for others as well. So thinking about the kind of the end of the day you're going back into home mode that kind of divide is there anything that you guys do to switch your brain off and and get off work mode um have you maybe started any hobbies or anything since you've been in preventative isolation (laughs) I feel like I've been picking up all sorts of these old crafts and things that I haven't been in (laughs) drugs and yeah how have you guys been staying sane I think when you've got um, family, um, I think it's a little bit different to people that perhaps live on their own or, you know, with a partner. I think when you do have family, it's it's quite different and it's back to things like board games or going out in the garden and sort of having a kick around with a ball with them or, you know, it, it's actually trying to entertain them and that becomes my focus then when I've switched off work. It's actually right, it's getting the mum hat kind of on and um you know really yeah entertaining the children with uh, their their stuff yeah yeah how about you Jenny how have you found it I think for me first of all I think work has been great because it's been in effect um a distraction so that's been um great um and also the stuff that we're working on is also helping people um in particular during this time so we are accelerating um at the moment a project to bring in a social learning platform and this is going to help massively with people feeling connected um connected and well in in a world of remoteness and isolation so that gives me a real sense of purpose um in my like job which is brilliant we're also going to be launching you Udemy to everybody across the group so in terms of my hobbies I've actually because I've got a sneaky peek already as well as business there's also some things in there so it looks like I'm going to be trying out some new yoga poses when I I have (laughs) kind of pinning up some of those courses (laughs) that's awesome what about you Laura why don't you tell us about your um oh god your your current hobbies so I'm, I'm actually super into gardening at the moment because oh my the weather God. is lovely. Me too. 
Yeah, it's amazing. Um, I've been propagating some of my plants, so that's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have like a whole jungle going on by the time we're done with this. But <laughs> it's wild. It's really cool. And I've been doing a lot of painting of Warhammer. Um, shameless kind of self-promotion there with my painting skills. <laughs> but it's been good. It's been good fun. Um, how about you, Rebecca? Have you been... What have you been up to? It's been a mixed bag. <laughs> I'm actually, my creativity has really gone up, I think. That's good. Um, so I've been trying to think of different creative things to do. Um, but I'm a little bit like a child in the sense of it changes every week. Um, yeah. So last week, I think I was going to become a fashion designer, whereas this week I'm very much into, I'm going to do some drawing. So I'm going to become a great artist yeah. this week. Um <laughs> But yeah, gardening is definitely a big one. I've never, I've never had a garden before. So when we moved to this house, that was a big, big thing for me. I've got absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Um, so <laughs> that's half the fun, isn't it? Like working it out and just trying to see, see what grows. Yeah, it's it's going well so far. I've also bizarrely become quite active. Um, <laughs> like because I think I've got a little bit more time in the day I'm finding time to do some exercise or I've started going running again and so yeah it's, it's actually working out quite well for me so far this I was just gonna say um me too we've actually uh, you've I don't know whether you've heard but Joe Wicks is doing a um half an hour yes. exercise session it's meant to be sort of a PE session for children every morning at nine o'clock for half yep. an hour so me and my other half have been um taking it in turns to do that with um Elliot so we've not only done that we've kind of gone out for more walks than we would do we've um, tried to go out on short weekly um, bike rides yeah. oh that's nice so I think actually we are more active as a family than we were before which is a positive positive. and the weather has been just incredible <laughs> the last that's week I don't helped. know what's going on but it's great <laughs> yeah and um exercise is just so good for obviously mental well-being as well yeah for sure have you been creating a new routine for yourselves with the workday kind of feeling a little bit different? I don't, I don't know about you, but it feels like it's starting later for me and going on a little bit later into the afternoon. Have you have you noticed it adjusting for you or? I think it's slightly different for both of us because Jenny's children are younger than mine. Um, mine, I'm still, it's very similar routine to what I had before. I'm still kind of getting up at the time that I would have normally got up for work. I'm normally logged on for the same time that I would normally log on um, because of the age that Elliot is he can entertain himself a little bit more so I've tried to keep in a very similar routine to what I had before um, but inevitably I think I have found that I've probably worked longer um, and I think one of the things is that it is harder sometimes to switch off when you are working from home. Yeah, I would echo that. I think it is harder. I think for me, it's kind of not only is the kind of the office walls kind of blown away, but also in terms of the working day has kind of blown away as well. So my husband and I are really lucky that both of us are able to work from home. So we are sharing the childcare between us. So this means that kind of my hours are kind of really odd and I can't even talk about counting hours you know I couldn't say that it's a nine till five job anymore this is why I think for me it's become more of a lifestyle than a job so um, I guess my top tips from the past couple of weeks is um, first of all enjoy the time that you do have with your family because that's a real positive positive. Um, I think also it's for me it's been about looking at what meetings I need to go to or what work I need to get done what's the deep work that I'm needing to get done because I really can't do that when the kids are around so I need to block out that time for when I've got my kind of work time to be able to be doing that but then there are other things like when I'm talking with our um, HR team or when I've got a conversation with some other people and um, it'll be okay having them in the background that I schedule those in for a time when I have got them. So for me, it's about really planning out the activities rather than kind of the time and then looking at those activities for when they can fit within um, within the hours of the day. Um, so I, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with not 
really, you know, the weekend, then I, I really switch off. I'm okay that it's great that I get to spend an hour with the kids in the in the garden and I might be checking, my, you know, having my phone in my pocket and I might need to answer the calls occasionally. But if I'm able to do that while I'm kicking a football around and the kids are enjoying it and I'm with them and then I'm able to do some deep work later on in the afternoon and into the evening, that works really well for me and I'm okay with that. Yeah, I, I suppose part of the whole adapting to working from home process is being a little bit more forgiving of yourself and and knowing that actually you, you you're not going to work set hours in the day and you have to give and take with with your lifestyle around you especially when you've got kids I think going back to routines I think everybody's routine is different and everybody needs to do what works for them um like again mine's been a pretty pretty mixed bag um some days I will switch off at five o'clock and have a glass of wine. Other days I will work through to like nine o'clock. Um, but it, you know, it's, it's all about balance. Um, and in terms of like, for me, motivation has been a massive struggle. Um, some days I have to force myself to get up and get ready as if I was going into the office. So I'll get up, I'll have a shower, I'll put my makeup on, I'll sit down, have a coffee and try and crack on with work but um I don't know about anybody else but this whole situation has really thrown my sleep pattern off I've been really struggling to try and sleep um so sometimes the prospect of getting up at seven or eight has become really difficult for me um which has then knocked sort of the routine of the whole day um so like what does everybody else do to try and motivate themselves when they're in a real slump I find that one of the best things that I can do is make lists of things and refer back to them and say like, right, today is the day I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And then I know, you know, if if some other things have fallen by the wayside, at least I've done those tasks. And in a way that kind of makes me feel like I've been productive for the day, even if they're little things, I think physically ticking them off feels just great. Um, So I, I find that helps quite a lot. So it's about setting yourself short term goals. Yeah, yeah. I guess that is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it it's being forgiving on yourself, and I think it is celebrating the small things. Um, and I think having a to do list is really helpful. And then it's celebrating, even if you've managed to, you know, do one small thing. It's giving yourself a pat on the back for it. And I think it's also knowing that there's going to be some days that you know, you're totally on it. And then there's going to be other days where actually the fear, then I, the anxiety yeah. of everything that's happening around work. I think work is a great distraction. But then sometimes it's when you close down the laptop and you switch off that it's the reality of everything that happens. Suddenly, you know, like Thursday night, you're clapping for the NHS where you, that's the first time that you've seen your neighbours in a week. And it's like those those kind of moments when it really hits what's actually happening. and. I think it is being, like Joe says, kind on yourself. I think it's knowing that some days you're going to need to go for, you know, a run or a walk in the middle of the day, and that's okay. Yeah. Some days you're going to need to just chat with someone, and that's okay. Just like you would if you were, um, you know, back in the studio, it's still being kind to yourself, particularly at this moment, because we are, um, you know, it's like everybody across the world is facing this real uncertain time no one's able to say oh you know in x amount of weeks it's all going to end you actually don't know no one like I say there's no manual for for this it's about trying different ways and what works one week the next week it might actually be something different um the one thing I would say is that your mind is the most powerful tool that you have and um as much as you're able to um feed yourself more of those positive thoughts about yourself and the kind of your day ahead the more your brain will um work towards that so kind of nearest sorry neuro linguistic programming says that the more you tell yourself the the thoughts the more your body will start to believe believe it so for example if i'm skiing and i'm telling myself i'm gonna fall over i'm gonna fall over my skis are gonna cross they're gonna cross they're they're going to cross because i'm telling my body to do that Um, But the more I tell myself I'm a great skier, I know what I'm doing, I'm going to get down this hill, the more likely I'm going to be able to do it. So it's um, 
where you can, sometimes we can start to go down a spiral of um, negativity and it's finding those ways and those people around us that are able to help us to come back up that spiral. And that can be lots of different ways. It could be from getting on a multiplayer game. It might be from um, getting in touch with people that you know um, in your family or at work, or obviously for us at Sumo, maybe a mental health first aider. It might be your arts and crafts. It's actually, it's the things that you know that help you to feel good. You've done it in the, in the past and they've helped you to feel better. And it's using those same techniques for me, it's listening to um, trolls and get get yourself back up again. It's a song that I put on <laughs> and that really helps me. You know, that's my go to. And it's not always going to do the trick, but it's going to help me that inch just to help myself to to kind of start to helicopter out. That's really helpful. That's yeah, that's really good advice. So like we discussed, there is no manual for this and everyone is kind of learning as they go. But have you found any resources in particular that have been kind of insightful on this situation um, or any kind of online materials that you think would be a good place for people to start? I think there's a lot out there at the moment. I think places like Mind, the Samaritans, the Mental Health Foundation, um, Anxiety UK. I think they've all got um, useful resources on their websites at the minute to help people um you know so if our mental health first aiders have got signposts that they refer people to so you know if someone has a conversation with one of the mental health first aiders and they're struggling with a particular area they will have a toolkit of places that they can signpost people to um, which I think is really important because again what works for one person may not work for someone else so it's finding um that help that support that works for you and your individual circumstances we've also got our lifeworks employee assistance program there's um, a useful app that people can look at um that's full of resources um and and tips to really help support in all areas of life um you know whatever the concerns are so there's a whole host of information i think there's a danger of sometimes feeling quite overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that's out there and particularly the amount of information that's that is coming out now um and you know it's yeah you just need to find what works for you and and which kind of resource works for you and maybe stick to one or two rather than trying to look at a whole host of of different things one one thing that i've actually been finding really helpful has been engaging with people through social media that I maybe wouldn't really talk to before. So in all our studios, we're encouraging people to share pictures online of their home setup. And it's kind of what you mentioned before, Jenny, where you'll be on a call with someone and you'll have all your mess in the background and you'll have just noises and distractions, but that's you and that's real. Um, We've been encouraging people to share posts of their real life situations um, with hashtag Sumo from home. So that's been really nice, um, kind of seeing colleagues that, Maybe I would only talk to you for five minutes while we're making a cup of tea. Actually seeing that, oh, look, hey, they've got a pet cat. That's really sweet. Like, it's it's really nice. It's like another side of people. So that's been really nice. It totally is. I, I think the first, the first five days of working this way, I think I got to know people on a much deeper level than I had in five months that I've been here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there's something about working through a crisis like this that really brings people together because we have to be a little bit more vulnerable and we have to really talk about how we're feeling because it can be difficult to process sometimes. So it's it's definitely bringing us together, which can only be a good thing. Yeah, I think people can definitely take comfort, even if they are, you know, living on their own, that we are all in this together across the world, like you said before. And that's, you know, quietly comforting, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it's surprising as well that when you do reach out to people, how many people are actually going through sort of the same kind of experience? Like we've got the same worries, the same anxieties. Mm. Like I was mentioning before with my sleep, I know an awful lot of people are losing sleep at the moment because it's it's all in the back of their mind what's yeah, going on. Yeah. And as, I, I think it's really important though as well that people remember that 
you know, everybody is in it together, but it is slightly different for everybody. Yeah. And it's okay that if you are particularly struggling, that you speak up to somebody, you know, a trusted colleague, a friend, mental health first aider, your manager, you know, that yes, everybody is in it together. And, but I think it's really important that people do still share their concerns, their worries, because there are people out there to support them. I think it it is. It's like, you know, like we've said, it's all the things that we have in place. And I think also that the kind of the virtual meetups are really, um, yeah, are really helping people, particularly people who live by themselves. Um, I think a lot does depend on the people that you have around you outside, you know, immediately, like physical contact around you um, can have a real impact during this time. Some people absolutely relish working from home. You know, some people have perhaps done it before in their roles. You know, they're perhaps seasoned home workers. Great. But they've got the situation that we're dealing with aside from that. And also there's a lot of people that aren't used to working from home that are trying to adapt to working from home with all the um, additional stresses of the situation that we're in, being with the partner more than they normally are, being with the kids, um, and it's an entirely different kind of view of it. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's important, isn't it? It's it is that it's the balance of the two, and I guess in in some ways there will be positives and negatives for everyone in the situation. But yeah, it's it's not it's difficult because it's working from home. It isn't working from home in an ideal situation it is working from home in a completely terrifying and anxiety inducing situation yeah and I think I think the main thing is for everybody it's okay however you're feeling about the situation it's okay and there is somebody out there I guarantee that will be feeling exactly the same as you but it's okay however you're feeling so obviously throughout this process, we're still having new recruits join us at SUMO. Um, what are the ways that you're helping them feel supported while they're onboarded? It's business as usual in a way, but we're having to adapt processes and practices for the virtual space. Um, lots of virtual communication, um, both on an informal level and a professional level, sort of before they start and after they start. But- Absolutely, we've got a manager guide together, particularly for new starters, because it's not, first of all, you've got a new starter that probably didn't uh, choose to join remotely, but they definitely didn't choose to join remotely in a world of coronavirus and isolation. So we have put together a lot of tips for managers to help them really formulate what they would like to kind of some tips for around before someone joins, but also that first week. So absolutely, it's kind of at 10 o'clock when they're um, meeting the team, they're getting everybody on the team together with a cup of tea or coffee and they've, you know, everybody's getting to meet and that that is kind of got a cadence over that first week. They're introducing them to the virtual meetups. They're also, um, we're ensuring during the induction that people have got access to the things that we have in place, like, like we've said quite a few times mental health first aiders and stuff like that but we're just making sure it always was covered in the induction but again we're just pointing people to that because again it is a time of more anxiety and starting a new job is an anxious time already so that's like even more heightened so um yeah there's been a lot of things um about helping people to feel really integrated um at this time for sure so we're going to wrap this one up Thank you, Jenny and Joe, for joining us today. Um, we've covered a number of resources in the podcast, so we're going to try and link them in the description as well. But if you are looking for a role, we've got tons open at sumo-digital.com forward slash careers. And all of our folks are posting some really cool content with the hashtag sumo from home on social media. Thanks for listening and we'll catch you next time. Bye.